This is an Electrolux Ergo Rapido non lithium, which I picked up at the same time as the Ergo Rapido lithium that we had a look at in a previous video. And uh, unlike the lithium, I'm pretty sure this one's just old and has uh, worn out batteries because I did get it to fire up briefly for a moment and then it just instantly shut off. So in this case, I know that the rotors are turning freely. Uh, it also, <laughs> miraculously, while it was running for a couple of seconds, it just sent it a lot uh, quieter than the lithium model. So I think this one might have a more uh, healthy uh, motor assembler, which can might be able to give us a bit of a more uh, sane reference for the noise level of one of these, since I thought the lithium one was extremely loud and horrid. So... Yeah, this is not coming off one-handed, but how can you just uh, take uh, this unit apart and uh, uh, just check the batteries right away? Because uh, I think these are 12 volt uh, Ni NIMH or NICADs, and uh, yeah, they're, they're not known for lasting too long under super high load. So let's get to it. I'm pretty sure this comes apart just like the other one. Alright, under the six screws there, Phillips head on this one as opposed to Torx on the new one and a couple of clips and it seems we're inside and the motor assembly really does look strikingly similar to the lithium model There's perhaps slightly larger radius on the opening and we've got, wow, these are some dinky looking batteries double A 1300 milliamp hours Electrolux branded wow this thing is <laughs> Simplicity itself, it seems. We even have a PCB in here. We've got something there, but that looks to be mounted behind the motor. So is this really just going to be a switch and a motor? Yeah, this thing isn't coming apart one-handed either. Yeah, this thing really is simplicity itself. Uh, although it's kind of crammed together in here. So you need to undo the <laughs> giant power resistor in the bottom, which does the uh, low power mode, which you can set uh, on the handle. Uh, actually, now we've just got on and off connected to the internal switch. It's like the Lithium version, you just have on or off of the internal switch. Curious though that this is a Three position switch, although it's just mechanically blocked by the case, so you can only use it in one direction. And yeah, the switch is battery straight onto the motor, and there's 0.2 volts in the, in the battery right now. I think I might have left it uh, in the on state when I accidentally turned it on. Whoops. But yeah, these batteries are going to be done for anyway. Yeah, I don't feel like spending any money on nickel batteries. Perhaps we can put some lithiums in here, just strip an old laptop battery. I've got a few of those. Better test for me to first way. Alright, we've got some test leads going there, so let's just see what happens. Oh, shit. Ugh, that, that, was, that was full of sawdust. Yeah, it seems to be running. Actually, it didn't sound too healthy. Sounded pretty much like the other one. But yeah, this one's obviously seen quite a lot of use. The entire thing is you know, disgusting and worn out. Seems to be used in some kind of wood shop thing. Probably started its life in the kitchen and then they got tired of it then. The daddy of the house took it into his workshop or some far from likes. And if we take the front cover off of the fan assembly, it really shows how related these two units are. The fan is practically identical to the other one, including the uh, press fit uh, uh, brass main for the fan, although this seems to be steel in the centre of this one rather than brass. But yeah, it's practically identical. You have to take the fan off to get access to the front bearing of the motor. You can see the screws down in there. And I uh, don't think you can take the fan off without damaging it. Which is a bit of a shame, because uh, if we turn it on, just run like that on a low speed, the engine does sound quite worn out, and something's rubbing against something in there. 
Something's definitely rubbing against something. Oh dear, I'm just going to put some grease in the rear bearing and be happy with that. I'm probably just going to turn this into something kind of insane thing anyway. But at least it runs. It runs pretty well. Save for the horrible rubbing noise. Right here, so stuff has been moving along. Uh, so where I'm at now is that I've written out the old uh, NIM cells. They're pretty crusty. And uh, I've been going loose with side cutters and Dremel inside the case of the vacuum in order to fit some 18650 lithiums in there. So I've just uh, cut away some of those things and I've ground off a couple of supports down there. So two lithium cells should fit pretty nicely in there. And another couple, since I've cut off a couple of supports there, should fit along the sides of a motor. Pretty much in the same arrangement as in the proper lithium model, except it also had one, I believe, going that way there. But uh, this chamber here isn't quite long enough on this model to make that happen. It seems they've modified uh, the case on this model compared to the lithium, making this area a bit shorter and uh, this area a bit longer. I'm not really certain why there wasn't... Oh yeah, of course, because they had two AAs lying in series like that, so yeah, that's a tiny difference in the cases, which makes it sadly impossible to just copy the battery pack out of the lithium model and put in this one. But we, we I've uh, just got uh, this little five, uh, four cell lithium protection board, which I got for a project, which I never ended up using. So I'm gonna, just going to use this, and I can't use uh, five cells anyway. And I think 5 cells would probably be a bit overkill for this 12 volt motor, especially since the internal resistance of these lithiums is going to be a lot lower than that of these 1300 milliamp hour NIMS. The batteries I'm using are just a couple of, uh, or rather, one torn air, torn asunder laptop battery pack from God knows when. And uh, I've got that just connected up in parallel, 4 cells, and charging with this little. Uh, County right here, and what's we've got one and a half amp hours going into it as of yet. They were pretty empty, sitting at about three volts. So, yeah, it's at 4.1 volt already. So, these cells might not be too good, but swapping cells is not going to be a big issue if I ever decide to do that. If I get some fresher ones, this will do for a test. This probably doesn't need giant batteries anyway since yeah 1.3 amp hour nickel metal hydrides they probably didn't have too much to give up the giant current levels this thing wants to consume and this motor when I tried to the lab possible it wanted more than 4 amps so it's probably discharging at like 5 or 6 C with these and um, yeah, these are probably not going to be too happy about the, the high discharge level, but who gives a toss? If, if, it, if it catches fire, it catches fire. I'll just toss it outside. Okay, I've very crudely mounted this thing back together right now with uh, a wire coming out the back and uh, got it hooked up to my big power tube here. So I think it would test it at a few different voltages just to get an idea as to how it behaves. So, we're at what, 4.7 volts now, so let's turn it on. 2 amps. It's drunk 10 amps. 10 amps at 14.8 volts, so that's, that's quite a lot of power. I wonder if my protection board is going to handle that. Probably not. Might go up in smoke. Oh well. No, something went wrong. I will just move to the next page, but I seem to have tripped the protection of the other one. And uh, I've now just uh, made it in the shaft. So I have uh, removed the uh, 0.75 ohm resistor, which was uh, in the vacuum in order to make room for batteries. and. That was the one that gave the lower power options, so I wonder what will happen if we just press the low power button of this. Ah, we just run the brush. <laughs> We've got carpet brushing mode. 
Don't just run everything in, I think it's 14.4 volts or something. That's pretty insane. Drawing... Now that's like 150 watts. Well, that's a quite considerable amount of power. A quite considerable amount of power indeed. <laughs> this thing is not going to last very long. It's definitely not going to last very long. These poor laptop batteries are going to get destroyed. That would be interesting anyway. Alright, so with this power test set, we are kind of skeptical that this battery management model is going to be able to do this without exploding, but uh, we'll give it a go anyway. If it goes up in smoky dirt, I'll probably put a fuse in series with batteries just to be on the safe side. And anyway, this is just a generic Chinese module. I don't have a manual for it, but I'd be pretty certain to think that this is the battery negative, battery cell 1, 2, and then the battery positive over there with the output at P plus and P minus. So, oh, we actually got two P minus. Now they're, yeah, they're just in parallel, so not sure what the certain of a deal there is. Perhaps one minus for the charger, one minus for the output. This one seems to be closer to the current shunt resistors, but that's hardly going to make a difference. But yeah, I'll probably use that one for the motor, and that one for the charger. It doesn't make too much of a difference, really. I'm considering trying to put some kind of a resistor in series with a battery, because this thing is pretty insane, running at 150 watts, and... Uh, oh. I wouldn't want to just explode everything right away. It would be nice to have a bit of a trial first, but it's difficult sizing the resistor for these kinds of power levels since uh, any resistor is going to dissipate quite a lot of power since we're talking about 10 amps, and w which we're trying to limit. So, yeah, I'm going to have to think about that. Probably won't end up doing it. I will just explode this module instead. Alright, we're moving forward. So the battery pack should be assembled now. Uh, so we've got uh, the positive terminal here with the 15 amp car fuse just soldered on. And uh, that's going in series with uh, the, these two cells back here. And it's just running through positive to negative and so forth with uh, the uh, BMS uh, checking wires for the different cells coming out here. We've got uh, one for... Uh, we've got positive here going to the BMS of two. So and we've got uh, cell 1 coming in from one of these two and cell 2 coming from one of these two and cell 3 is uh, going to be one, one of these two again and then cell f the battery negative is coming there so we've got all the wires set up and making pretty sure not to short anything out because this is all live lithium powered stuff these thin <laughs> cat5 strands would uh, literally go up in smoke if I shorted this out now so I'd better be a bit careful. So now all I've got to do is uh, install the battery management board and I'm going to put a bit of uh, filtering on the output. Just a couple of caps, perhaps a reverse diode. Just in order to make sure that uh, the insane amount of EMI that's going to come out of this brush DC motor isn't going to explode this board because that would be a bit of a shame these brush DC motors are really brutal on electronics so, so let's just check that we've got a bit of voltage coming out of this pack it should be fully charged 16 and a half volts so we certainly have the power all we need to do is wire it up and here's the little snubber thing I made so I just uh, uh, took an, a rectifier out of an old uh, switch mode power supply and uh, strapped a couple of caps across it so this is in a uh, reverse uh, polarity so it doesn't conduct normal but it will snub out any negative voltage coming through uh, when you switch this off or something like that and uh, it seems to capture everything quite well I took a little capture on the scope there and uh, the ripple while the motor is running seems to be just uh, about 70 millivolts plus some uh, extra little peaks and 
valleys here and there. So it looks quite alright. I would uh, think that the battery board is going to survive that. So now all we've got to do is hook that up, and then we're done. Then we've got our Ergo Insano. And that's the BMS soldered up. I gave it a ton little zap at 16.8 volts at the P plus and P minus uh, solder pads of a power supply, and it seems to have sprung to life. Yeah, there's a battery voltage at the P plus and P minus terminals now. Uh, I don't dare try and probe that one hand, as you're just going to have to take my word for it. So, two wires left to go. I'm a bit excited because this thing, testing it at higher voltages, has been incredibly violent. So I have no idea how it's actually going to behave under better power. Alright, it's slightly put back together. I'll just well put the uh, dust thing in there as well. Alright, it's time for our first start. And uh, one of three things is going to happen. I think one which I think is the most likely is this is just going to go oomph and shut down because the BMS has uh, just detected overcurrent and shut down. Uh, option two is it works perfectly. And option three is it just starts uh, basically catching fire and I'm going to have to use these pliers to cut the positive battery lead there. Here goes nothing. Yep. Bzz, and nothing. Ah, uh, what an anti-climax. Well, I'll take two, I'll just uh, put a big cap over the BMS output now in case it's just the total voltage drop which is dragging it down. Nope. Alright, so screw the battery management system. I've never done the responsible thing and hooked the motor straight up to the battery, so this board's doing nothing except to. Uh, no, it's doing nothing because it's got no power supply. And uh, this motor is going to run now, but uh, I just want to see how violent it is. Because I, I, I'm a bit afraid by now that the ba these batteries just don't have the grunt to push the 10 ish amps that this motor uh, requires to run. So let's just press the button. Okay, maybe they do have a grunt. I've got to check for balls, jumbos. Alright, screw it. I'm going manual. Okay, I think my batteries are just kind of crap. I think my batteries are really just really, really, really crap. Yeah, well, from just doing that, that, that was literally the second time I ran it, and it, it ran for perhaps 40 seconds at the most, and these batteries are just battered and bruised and very warm to the touch. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, these batteries are just crap. <laughs> There's no way they're going to keep up. I'm going to have to get me some better, actual proper power tool style batteries for this. And yeah. Man, I'm not certain if it's worth it. So perhaps the next logical step in this would be to make use of all the empty space in here and just uh, use a lot of old crappy laptop batteries and the sacrifice the ability to use as a table of vacuum hmm, I'm gonna think about that but sadly for the time being I think this is gonna have to go on the shelf for a while because I've got some other interesting projects coming up and uh, I need my bench Sadly, but I'm pretty certain I'm going to do something with this. Anyway, thank you for watching. Sorry for the anti-climax. Cheerio.